It's time for Recipe of the Day. If you've been listening to this show for a while, you probably know that I am always after delicious food with the least amount of effort. And I don't mean that I'm lazy exactly when it comes to cooking. I mean that if there's not a good reason for doing something, if it's going to be more difficult or it's going to take longer, or it's kind of like nitpicky a whole bunch of steps and there's not a good reason for it, I am not going to do it. And that is why I always bake meatballs instead of pan frying them. It is absolutely true that you get a better dark brown crust on your meatballs if you pan fry them. But if you're sticking them in tomato sauce and they're simmering in there, some of that crust is going to go away anyways, and it doesn't end up making a big difference. And when you're pan frying meatballs, they kind of spatter. It's greasy. I also find that they don't cook that evenly in the skillet. You're always having to like turn them around and you're wondering if they're all cooked, if they're all done. It's just kind of a pain. Whereas if you bake them, especially using the technique I'm going to tell you, they are all evenly cooked, they are juicy inside, and they do get a nice brown crust on the outside thanks to the broiler, and they just make life easier. Delicious food made more easily, I'm all about that. So you can use this baking technique with any kind of meatball recipe that you have. It is going to work the exact same. Just if they're bigger, they will take longer. And if they're smaller, they will take less time. The recipe that I have for you today is a half pound of ground beef and a half pound of ground pork with half a cup of dry breadcrumbs, an egg, it says half a cup of finely chopped onion. That's probably like a small onion. And then some flat leaf parsley right in there, salt and pepper. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip that I really love for not over mixing your meat. Whenever I'm doing anything with ground meat that involves kind of mixing that egg and breadcrumb stuff into it, I do this and it works like a charm. So you know how you want to make sure that all the seasonings and all the ingredients are thoroughly mixed, but you probably also know that if you over mix ground meat, it gets tough. And that's because you're breaking down all those little shreds of meat into tiny little bits. The tinier they get, the more tough the meat's going to be. So you really want to try and mix it as little as possible while getting it thoroughly mixed. So what I do is I mix all the other stuff together first. So get out your bowl into it, put the breadcrumbs, the egg, the onion, the flat leaf parsley, the salt and pepper, give it a good mix. Once that's all mixed, then you know it's fully combined so that when you add your ground meat to there and you're mixing it up, as soon as it seems kind of well combined, you know that all of the seasoning is mixed all the way through. All the breadcrumbs are mixed all the way through because you mixed those things together evenly first. You see what I mean? Just a little bit less mixing. Whereas if you add the breadcrumbs and there's like a pile of salt that you just kind of clumped on top. Then you're trying to mix, 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 and you're wondering, is that salt getting all the way through? You see what I'm saying? Already spread it all out into the other ingredients, and then it's going to be evenly mixed into your ground meat. Now, this recipe says salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to say start with half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then I always do the same test. I mean, it's kind of like a cook's treat, but also just a test to make sure that my seasoning is good. You take like a tablespoon of the mixed up meat and push it down into a little patty and then put it on a microwave safe plate in the microwave for 10 to 20 seconds, maybe a little more. You just don't want it pink on the inside anymore. Cool it down, like blow on it because it's going to be hot and then give it a taste. Now you're not going to have the searing. You're not going to have that nice caramelization and browning, but you're going to get a good sense on whether that seasoning was enough for you. Okay, now it's time to bake those babies. So preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, line a baking sheet with parchment paper and give it a good spray. And then you're going to make your meatballs. So you want to roll one inch balls. You can use like a cookie scoop or something, but I just kind of eyeball it. You want them about one inch round. And then you're just going to plop them onto the baking sheet, letting there be some space between them. And then you're baking them until they're no longer pink inside. It's going to be about 18 to 20 minutes. Then you're turning on the broiler and you're putting the pan about six to eight inches from the heat and you're going to broil them until they're nice and brown and crispy on one side, four or five minutes, flip them over and brown the other side and then they are done. You get juicy, evenly cooked meatballs and they're nice and brown on the outside and you didn't have to stand there stirring them and worrying about all that grease spatter, very little grease at all in here. We didn't add oil for frying these. They turn 
turn out really, really nice. I think you're going to really like this technique. I'll put the link to this recipe in the show notes, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. If you enjoy this recipe, if you find this so easy and delightful, please leave a comment and a five-star rating. That helps other people find it and know that they can trust it. And it lets me know that you're listening. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast, Recipe of the Day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. Thank you.